Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a wrap-up that I think is going to turn into a ramble about comics journalism. So to start with, just to define the genre, uh, comics journalism is, like it says on the tin, journalistic work that told through comics. And often I think there is a line at which memoir can overlap with comics journalism. And what got me thinking about this is because I specifically read a work where in the afterword the author talks about how she was mixing the styles of graphic memoir and comics journalism, which led me down the path of rereading a bunch of Joe Sacco's work. And he is kind of the godfather of modern comics journalism, although comics journalism was very common in the 1920s and there were quite a few comics journalists who were reporting on labor issues in those days, for example. So the book that started me thinking about that was Ali Fitzgerald's Drawn to Berlin, Comic Workshops in Refugee Shelters and Other Stories from a New Europe. I don't love the New Europe element in the heading, although, like, I understand the politics behind that, but meh. I understand where she's coming from with that label because that is what gets used in the news, but I don't love that because the whole implication of a, a certain migration pattern having certain dates is just such a misrepresentation of what history actually is and how human populations move. But this is a minor point. So Ali Fitzgerald is an American cartoonist who lives in Berlin and she was volunteering and working in refugee shelters, running essentially art classes for primarily refugee children, but she was inviting adults to do that as well. Um, I talked a while back about Kate Evans' work. Uh, I talked a while ago about Kate Evans' book Threads from the Refugee Crisis, in which she talks about having done something similar in the Calais jungle. And so I was a little surprised to find out that this is apparently a common thing that people are writing that is a, a starting point for a lot of people to write books of this nature. In this one, Fitzgerald does a couple of things that are interesting in that she has clearly done quite a bit of historical research and she is talking about a history of xenophobia and immigration patterns in Germany and specifically in Berlin over the past 80 or so years, which does suggest a more journalistic bent, but she does occasionally include more about herself than other comics journalists might. Uh, for example, she does talk about how some of the refugees will ask her about her personal life and she's very reticent to share certain things, not because she doesn't want to share her life, but because she's had negative experiences when people find out that she dates women. And she'll frequently compare the situations that the refugees are experiencing with her own experience of having moved from the United States to Germany, and the perceptions of language abilities and how she essentially says that even after having lived there for several years and speaking a reasonable level of German, she will still sometimes say, oh, can we continue this conversation in English when she's in shops or something? And she's saying, pointing out that the, the languages that a lot of the refugees are speaking are not given the same status. So, so she's giving some commentary of that through her own experience. I didn't 100% think that that actually worked particularly well. I felt like the memoir bits were not, uh, there weren't quite enough of them to balance, to throw the balance away from the journalistic element. However, that meant that when she does have the personal interludes, it does feel like it's interrupting the main part. Whereas I felt like if there had been a larger percentage, if it had been a full quarter memoir or even a third memoir, I could absolutely see that being really brilliant. Uh, so it was interesting to then read the afterward and see how she was conscious of how she was mixing the two things and that she was trying to work on a balance of that. So even though I didn't think the balance 100% worked, um, I thought it was interesting that that was obviously something she was consciously that she was conscious of as she was writing the book. And because then I was thinking about that, I uh, ended up picking up uh, two, ended up picking up some of Joe Sacco's older work. Um, I talked about his Paying the Land last year. That was a new release and his first long form book in about 10 years. In that book, he'd been looking into uh, Northern Reserve communities in the Northwest Territories in Canada. And there were quite a few elements of that that I found fascinating just because as a non-Canadian person, he's a Maltese American, he has a different voice than a lot of the reporting that we see coming from people within Canada where there's an expectation of having certain pre-existing ideas about uh, <laughs> what all of the things mean. So I found it interesting on that basis, but also he's just does a brilliant job. The amount of detail that he puts into his art is very impressive. 
And if you haven't read his book Journalism, which is a collection of his short form work, that's worth picking up even if you don't read any of his longer work, just to get the perspective on the balance that a comics journalist makes that a printer photojournalist doesn't. Because he makes the point that a photographer can take a picture of an ambulance or a print journalist can tell you the ambulance drove by and you'll have your own image of it, but he has to decide how he's going to portray the ambulance when he draws it and how much detail he's going to include and what kind of information you're going to get out of that detail. So that's all really interesting. Um, in any case, I'd read a number of books a number of years ago and I thought it would be interesting to revisit some of them. I currently have the, co the deluxe edition of Palestine on hold at the library and it hasn't come in yet. That is his first big work that came out in the early 90s and I think is what made him, brought him to everybody's attention as kind of the trailblazer in comics journalism. And uh, then his next project in the mid 90s was a number of books, two shorter ones that are set in Sarajevo and then this longer one, Safe Area Garaja, The War in Eastern Bosnia, 1992 to 1995. Despite the subheading on this, this is very much set uh, at the very tail end of the war, which I had not remembered going into this. And uh, he, I'll hold up some of the art here. And I think one of the things that's interesting about Joe Sacco is that he is willing to then, because comics journalism doesn't have the quick turnaround time that photo or print journalism does, um, because it takes months and months for him to do all of this detailed artwork, um, he gets to have interest, interesting points of reflection where he realizes that he could have asked additional questions or that he missed following up on something that later proved to be important because when this comes out, enough time has passed that he's been able to reflect on that. Whereas if you were writing for a newspaper or photographing something for a newspaper, you would be publishing that the next day or the next week. And you wouldn't necessarily know that your work would be out there in the world before you would realize, possibly for years before you'd realize that you'd miss something. Whereas in this, because it's such a, a longer process, he has time to look back on things. So at one point he, comments on he talked to two survivors of the massacre at Srebrenica and they told him some things that he thought that doesn't sound likely so he doesn't follow up because he, he thinks they're just completely traumatized so they don't understand what they're saying and before and in between that interview and when this book was published he realized he finds out that no the horrific stuff that they were describing actually did happen and he had had this opportunity to interview them further but because he had this conception that that can't possibly be true, he didn't ask follow-up questions. And I think it's unusual to see that in something other than a journalist writing a memoir many years later. So that is definitely something that's very unique to comics journalism as a form. I think almost as with Drawn to Berlin, I did almost enjoy the afterword where he's reflecting on things that he missed or things that he got uh, almost as much as I appreciated the book. It is interesting to revisit this many years later when again this is something that we know more about but even though it's less immediate and less in the news than it was for that brief moment when people were actually paying attention to that. So it's depressing but at least it's something that kind of has an end so you don't think wow this is absolute despair. Absolute despair on the other hand. Um, after he did the work in Bosnia he went back and did more work in Palestine. And the result of that is this book, Footnotes in Gaza. And the reasoning behind the title is that when he was writing the earlier book, whenever he would talk to people, there were essentially footnotes to everything. Like this happened in whatever year in the 80s, but it relates to this that happened in the 60s, which is this that happened in the 50s, which is this that happened back with the creation of Israel and everyone being kicked out of their homes. What he goes after in this is a particular footnote from a massacre that happened in the in 1956 and as he talks to people and tries to find survivors and participants of that he keeps coming across a couple of problems one of which is just that because the people who survived it or who witnessed it are are primarily elderly at this point a lot of them have forgotten things but also because there have been so many other incidents in the years in between Sometimes he'll be interviewing someone and they'll realize, no, they're actually telling him about something that happened in the 60s, or no, they're actually telling him about a different event at a different point in time. But then the other piece that he comes across is that most of the younger people are asking him, 
why do you care about this thing that happened in 1956 when someone is bulldozing my house today? And at one point he's frustrated with having to answer that question over and over. And he comes up with, well, in 50 years, no one will remember you either, which seems incredibly harsh. But at the same time, you, you do get a feeling of the process much more in a work like this than, again, I think you would get in print or photojournalism, because you are essentially going on the ride with him. So yeah, that is super depressing, <laughs> even aside from the depressing nature of all of this. Um, it did make me think how interesting it is that we don't actually know much about him as an individual. There are a few points where he's paying people for things and so we know he's American because of that. And I mean even the fact that I know he's Maltese is because in one of his other books he kind of mentions that. Uh, he had a short piece um, about refugees in Malta and he kind of mentions that because he's able to interview people in a way that he isn't in a lot of these other countries because of the, there's no language barrier for him there. Yeah, so there isn't a lot of himself in there even though we are following him and he is essentially a character in the book as as we follow him as he interviews people and investigates things which is distinct very different from something that does introduce a lot more memoir elements like Kate Evans threads from the refugee crisis or Ali Fitzgerald's drawn to Berlin which did make me wonder am I judging any of these books fairly because I go in and I think comics journalism it will be like Joe Sacco and no one else can be Joe Sacco because he is kind of the godfather of this modern form of it so yeah I don't know how fairly that makes it that makes judging any of the other works but <laughs> I don't have a good su uh, summation to end this on but if you've read any of these I'd love to hear what you thought um, are you a fan of Joe Sacco's work have you read any comics journalism and if not pick up some Joe Sacco to start with because uh, He's brilliant. Um, if you've read others, I'd love to hear which are your favorites and yeah. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.